I want to digress for a moment to take note of another famous writer whose name is entwined in my memory now with yours forever. You may recognize the woman that we interviewed last fall. What I asked Susan Sontag was, had she really said, as Entertainment Weekly reported, who is Camille Paglia? Did I really say it? You mean, do I really say it? Of course I did say it. Why? What a way to ask me. No. Did I really say something that <laughs> Entertainment Weekly reported? Yes, I really did say it. Meaning what? I'm, Meaning I'm, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Do, are, you we, have, are we not speaking no, English? No, no. Had you not heard about her or not I read her or not, not approved of her? I think if I say who is Camille Paglia. No, I didn't say that. Listen, I don't read Entertainment Weekly. Why don't you ask me a direct question? Excuse me. The, um, had you really not read or, or reckoned with Until uh, about two and a half weeks ago, I had never heard of Camille Paglia. That is correct. I was astonished, I told her, because Paglia and Sontag had written on so many of the same subjects, from feminism to Italian Catholic paganism. Well, I wouldn't know that, would I? You'd be surprised at all the things I don't know, because I, I know about a lot of other things, and I read all the time. And I don't think I'm wasting my time in what I do read, so one can't read everything. <laughs> <laughs> had she heard of you? Of course she had. People have been mentioning me to her for years. Not only that, but she can't continue to claim she's a bibliomaniac uh, when she'd been you know, living in New York, and my book had been a bestseller in New York for like years, and my, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a massive denial out there, and yes. maybe a study denial. What's that all about? Well, I think that um, it's as in um, the turning point with Anne Bancroft. I mean, this is she literally is being passed, okay, by a younger rival, and it, in, and she's not handling it, I'm afraid, very <laughs> gracefully. Um, but um, you know, Susan Sontag was an enormous figure to us in the '60s, and um, it's it's really unfortunate what she did to herself. Like Germaine Greer, there was a general collapse uh, in the '70s. I, you know, it's too bad because she was once a prophet um, of uh, popular culture, and then and then Sontag became very snobbish, uh, and uh, and began chasing after all these male European writers and so on, and she lost the, the cultural centrality that she had. I am the Sontag of the 90s, there's no doubt, and um, I'm like one of a series that goes back through Mary McCarthy to, you know, to, to Dorothy uh, Parker and so on, and I think that uh, Sontag belongs to the generation before World War II. She doesn't watch TV, she's not into rock, and she has been uh, passed. She went on to found it, was proud of the fact that she found it impossible. I asked her if she'd seen the Republican convention on television, she said, no, but I read the text. Oh, she is so out of it. Oh, Sontag is, is, Sontag is gone. She, I mean, I'm so happy. She came out of hiding. I have been talking about Sontag since I was my, my rise to fame for the last three years, right? No one was interested, okay? So, did Miss such Mandarin in her New York apartment. Miss Mandarin did such, me such a favor by coming out with this novel. She came out, and everyone remembers the old Sontag. You see, they remember her as being beautiful, as being interesting, and suddenly they really saw her, okay, for the first time, and they realized she's dull, okay? She's boring. She's solipsistic. She knows nothing about, about contemporary life. She's not a very good writer any longer, okay? Um, and, and, and even this new novel, she's become the toast of the bourgeoisie. She's no longer even avant-garde, okay? So she did me a tremendous favor. In was a wonderful year for me because but she came out of hiding and Germaine Greer came out of hiding and suddenly people realized just how interesting I am. <laughs> but you know